Hi friends, I'm Jeff E.G. One interesting topic I've come across is whether to use the MIDI functions that are built into your MIDI controller or to use the MIDI functions that are built into Logic. If you have a modern MIDI controller like this Novation Launch Key 49, it comes with a bunch of capabilities. It has a chord mode, a scale mode, an arpeggiator, and other features that help generate MIDI and make it easier for you to play. But the real question is, is that the best strategy? It almost doesn't matter what vendor you buy a MIDI controller from these days. If you've bought anything within the last five years, they all include these MIDI functions. Scale mode to make sure that the notes that you play, regardless of what key you hit, fit into the key of a song. Chord mode, where you can play chords with one finger. User chords, where you can define multiple chord sets and execute those by just playing one note at a time. An arpeggiator, which is pretty complex, and the ability to transpose. This is just a quick reminder of the way these MIDI features work. So one of them is fixed chord. Now, any note that I play will play a C major. Let's take a look at what you get when you record that MIDI. You can see that you get all the MIDI notes of the chord even though I'm only playing one note on the MIDI controller. Another feature is the arpeggiator. Turn the arpeggiator on and then play a series of notes. And I can put that into latch mode with shift arp. Then I can control the variations, the timing, and the randomness by playing shift. It goes up and down. Here's a random. Here's down. Let's go back to up and down. And control the timing. Well, you get all of the notes, which is great. Not just the individual chord that you played, but all the MIDI generated notes. The last example would be the scale mode. You press scale and you can pick the scale that you're playing in. Right now it says D major. To change that, you press shift scale, play a key C, and then you can choose whether you want major, minor, or what scale settings that you want. Once in scale mode, it doesn't matter what notes you play, they're all gonna be in key. So even though I'm playing sharps and flats, it will only record notes in the key that I've specified. Let's take a look at the chord MIDI function. And you can see it right here. How I got there was over on the channel strip. There are a lot of different MIDI functions available. I'm just choosing the chord trigger and it's currently set to single. And if I play a note, it's playing a chord. But what chord? Well, let's clear it and teach it a chord. I'm gonna play a C7. And now all the notes have been assigned a seventh chord. So I'm going to play a C. I get that chord, depending on whatever root key I play. Let's clear that and try it again. 
do something really simple. We're going to learn just a C major chord and it assigns to all the notes. So play a C, I got a C major, play D, D major. Plays the same major chord every time. Okay, let's try the multi-mode. Multi-mode lets you assign different chords to different keys. So let's just clear what we have here. Click on learn, click on the A key, and I'm gonna play an A minor. Okay, and then I'm gonna click on a B, and I'm gonna play a B chord, B minor seventh, and I'm gonna click on a C, and I'm gonna play a C minor seventh, and turn off learn. There you go. So there's really no limits here. You can use the entire keyboard, program as many chords as you want. Okay, on a MIDI keyboard, they call this the scale option, but the MIDI effect we're gonna use in Logic is called Transposer. It works the same way. When you open up Transposer, all of the notes are in a chromatic mode. you play sharps and flats, what you would expect. But if you want to change the key, you could change it to say D instead of chromatic. You can choose say minor pentatonic. Now every note that you play is going to be in the D minor pentatonic scale, regardless of what key you press. So you hear some notes executing the same note so it, it basically shifts whatever note you play. You play a sharp or a flat, it's gonna move it to the closest note that falls into the D minor pentatonic scale. And you can do this on any track. So if you want to solo over a particular pattern and you don't want to worry about playing the wrong notes, this is the way you do it, transposer. Another way you can use transposer is to transpose. Now normally on a track, you have the option over in the inspector to transpose the MIDI up an octave, two octaves, three octaves, or down. If you want to make that less than an octave change, one way you can do it, there are several, is to go over to MIDI effects, choose the transposer, and just listen to this. And I can, I'll just adjust the semitones as it goes. Transposer is an all-around useful tool for modifying your MIDI. Another MIDI effects tool is the arpeggiator that comes in Logic. And this is by far more powerful than almost any arpeggiator that's built into a, a MIDI controller keyboard, in my opinion. It's quite simple if you press a variety of notes. And right now you can see the rate is, it's playing 16th notes. If you put it into latch mode, you can play and hold down those notes once. Change the direction. Up and down. Outside in. Randomizing. There are lots of options here, obviously controlling the rate. If you want more notes, you can increase the rate instead of 16th notes. If you want dotted notes or triplets, you can change that. Take a look at all the options that you can control here is how long the note is played, how much randomization, the velocity values, whether they're all the same or variable, and the degree to which the velocity is randomized. Amount of swing is pretty standard, and the length of the cycle. Let's do that again, but start with just a simple arpeggio of four notes. Latch mode. Off to the right here, you've got variations on how those four notes are played and the octave range, both currently set to one. I'll show you what it sounds like if you increase the range 
and the variations. There are other MIDI effects, and uh, if you click on the channel strip and take a look, you've got the arpeggiator, a chord trigger, there's a modifier, there's a modulator. You can add modulation to anything as a MIDI effect. There's note repeater, scripter, transpose. And one of the things that you can do in Logic that you could not do with your MIDI controller is you can stack these. You can have multiple. So you can see here, I've got the arpeggiator, I've got the modulator, which looks like this. And I've got note repeat, which looks like this. So I've got all these different tools to modify the MIDI. You can get some pretty strange results. So what I have there is just a basic drum beat with Drum Machine Designer and a patch that I pulled out of Alchemy, which is just playing basically whole notes. Turn on the arpeggiator. Turn on the modulator. Turn off the arpeggiator, but turn on the note repeat. So I can get pretty wild by stacking these MIDI effects one on top of another. And again, that's something you cannot do with the MIDI controller keyboard. There are several advantages to using the MIDI effects that are built into Logic. For one, it doesn't depend on the controller. So if you get a different controller later in the evolution of your home studio, everything's still going to work. You're not depending upon that controller that you bought. The other thing is if you collaborate with other people, it's better to have the MIDI effects built into Logic than to have them depend upon your MIDI controller. Of course, that's just my opinion. But my opinion matters.